So the entire time I was talking about Candyman, you were probably thinking this to yourself, weren't you? Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! Happy now? Let's talk about the original. Nineteen seventy three's The Wicker Man centers around a devout Christian policeman, Neil Howey, who receives an anonymous letter saying that there's a girl missing named Rowan Morrison. She's gone missing from the island of Summer Isle, which is known for their amazing harvest of apples. No have an apple. No apples. No apples. On an island famous for its fruit and vegetables. I expect they've all been exported. Yes, this is important. Upon his arrival to the island, Howie is shocked and offended by the island's pagan rituals. And the sex. Mostly the sex. He believes the girl was kidnapped in order to be killed for a sacrifice, ensuring the pagan gods would provide the island with a bountiful harvest in the next season. Told you the apples were important. But it's revealed that the girl isn't missing at all, and it's him who's been brought to the island to be sacrificed, and thus he's brought to a giant wicker man where he burns to death while the islanders chant gleefully. A lot of what makes the original movie so scary is the subtext. Mostly how the cultures clash between Howie's Christian faith and the comparable deviance of the island's Celtic paganism. Throughout the film, it's almost as if their promiscuous nature seems to be taunting Howie at every corner, driving him slowly insane. They sing a joyous song about how the landlord's daughter sleeps with pretty much every boy in town. The parts of every gentleman do stand up at attention. <laughs> their children are taught sex and fertility at a very early age. The phallic symptom. That is correct. He also just happened to show up on May Day, so there are costumes, games, and beheadings galore. <laughs> because fun. But everything leading up to the actual burning in the Wicker Man is amazing, too. The Islanders are so creepy and mysterious throughout the entire film. Adults, children, teenagers, all of them seem to be toying with the policemen at every turn. Of course, the movie does give you one big bad to identify, and it's somebody who is really going to be missed. Good afternoon, Sergeant Howie. I trust the sight of the young people refreshes you. In case you haven't seen any of my past praises of the man, here's a quick recap of why Christopher Lee was the greatest man who ever lived. He was Dracula, a Bond villain, Count Dooku, and Saruman. He hunted Nazis in World War II with Ian Fleming. He could speak five different languages fluently and others conversationally, and he's made four metal albums about Charlemagne. Reading his Wikipedia page is like combining everything that makes a man a man and a god a god. He was awesome. His legend precedes him the way lightning precedes thunder. He is the most interesting man in the world. And in this, he just fits the part perfectly. Part of it comes from his creepy presence that just surrounds him, but also his height and his voice when compared to the other islanders makes him incredibly intimidating. He brought you up to be a pagan. A heathen, conceivably, but not, I hope, an unenlightened one. Even when he's dressed as Cher's corpse, he's still the manliest thing on the planet. And now, for our more dreadful sacrifice to those who command the fruit of the earth. So combining the brilliant performances of not only Lee, but also the officer played by Edward Woodward, the obvious cover-up from the townspeople, and all the ominous ritualistic overtones, you end up with one hell of a climax. How he spends the entire film looking for a supposed sacrifice, never realizing that it's he himself who was orchestrated to be the victim from the start. He was brought to the island because he fits all the qualifications of the perfect pagan sacrifice. A man who would come here of his own free will. A man who has come here with the power of a king. A man who would come here as a virgin. A man who has come here as a fool. And so they anoint him with oil, clean his wounds, and slowly carry him up the hill where waiting for him is... this. Oh God! Oh Jesus Christ! Oh, God. oh my God! If you really think about it, it's a lot more depressing than it seems. More so than a man being burned to death. 
He's dying as a sacrifice to a pagan god he doesn't believe in, and he dies painfully singing Christian hymns to his god, which are drowned out by old English folk songs. Of all the films he's made, more than 200 of them, Christopher Lee says that this was his best. But he also says that the version we saw wasn't the best one. See, EMI wanted a lot of changes made to the theatrical run and even suggested a more upbeat ending to the film. Cause I guess they felt a man burning to death in a giant wooden statue is a bit of a downer. Who knew? But they also wanted the director to trim about 20 minutes of scenes off the island, a few Irish folk songs, and some of Christopher Lee's lines when he's first introduced. Your lordship seems strangely unconcerned. I'm confident your suspicions are wrong, Sergeant. We don't commit murder up here. We're a deeply religious people. The film was still good, but it wasn't the complete vision, and it wouldn't be completely restored until a special edition DVD would come out in the early 2000s. Which is actually a miracle because the only reason they were able to find all the missing scenes, and this is true, was because there was a copy lying around Roger Corman's house. Did you find the girl? No, well, I can't say I'm very surprised. The movie is just a gem. It's got so many great moments, it's so well paced, and it's got this overall atmosphere of just undeniable dread. So how about that remake? How'd it get burned? I, How'd it get burned? How'd it get burned? I don't know! There are too many terrible things about this movie to list here, and every other YouTube channel talks about how bad this movie is, so I'll be brief. This is the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. Probably because I hold the original in such high regard, but I don't even find it unintentionally funny. What is it? What's wrong, sister? I own seven Ed Wood movies. I saw Birdemic and The Room in the theaters, but this one pissed me off to no end. Now, if you're looking for an official sequel to The Wicker Man, there was a movie made in 2011 from the same director that actually featured an appearance from Christopher Lee, and it's called The Wicker Tree. I haven't seen it yet, but it's gotten some pretty bad reviews. Not nearly as bad as the remake, though, so maybe I'll check it out eventually. Come. It is time to keep your appointment with The Wicker Man. The original Wicker Man is so suspenseful, so creepy, so good that it really sucks that the remake is the first thing that people think of when they hear the title. There's a lot to love about this film, from the atmosphere, to the music, to the twists and turns that the story takes. It's just so well made, and it doesn't need to rely on blood, gore, or violence to make its story work. Just a lot of great acting, a powerful script, and fire. Lots and lots of fire. You know, I've been going through a lot of cult classics and stuff that a lot of people haven't heard of this month. So I'll tell you what, next time we're going to talk about a classic directed by my favorite director of all time. And chances are you've actually heard of this one.